My name is Dr. Catherine Kalua Kaingu. Um, I'm a fourth born in a family of seven children. I'm married with two, two sons. Uh, I grew up in Tana River County, which, which is in uh, the remote parts of Kenya. And uh, my mom was a teacher. And uh, for her, education was everything for us. It was like, I can't give you much, but uh, I will ensure that you get education. So from, um, from an early age, education has always been the key thing in my life. So she managed to educate seven of us. Because my dad was there, he was a farmer, but uh, he died early in our lives. So basically we were brought up by my mom. Flashback to the time you were a primary school girl. What are some of the few problems that you did encounter? Okay, one, I had to walk to school without shoes, which was a major thing. So you're exposed to things like jiggers. There's no piped water, so you're drinking dirty water. And there were many problems, even things as simple as having your monthly period. You would have to stay home for three days because you don't have the necessary facilities to take care of yourself. So you miss school. So those are some of the things that I faced. What did you do to your university education? I did uh, a degree in Bachelor of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Nairobi. After that, I wanted to work for some time, so I went out and I worked. Uh, I was employed in a farm called Kilifi Plantations in Kilifi. Then I decided to go to an NGO called Plan International. So I worked with Plan International for about five years, then I decided to come back to the university because I wanted to get a master's and a PhD before my son gets to the university. What is your area of research? Okay, my area of research is on, uh, I'm trying to find out uh, the antifertility properties of two medicinal plants from Tana River County. And these are plants that are traditionally used by the women there to help them in terms of spacing the childbirths. So for me, I was interested in finding out exactly what these women in Tana River are doing and how then are they able to space their children. And uh, I wanted to put the science now behind the, the, the medicine that they are taking. Is it safe? Is it effective? And what is the mechanism of action? So I'm trying to meet the unmet contraceptive need in this country, at least starting with one county. As a researcher, what could be some of the challenges that you are facing, especially a female researcher? Mm. The major challenge is the funding, because like for the masters, I had to fund myself. I wasn't funded by anyone. For the PhD, I was lucky enough that the, the Rice Afnet gave me this, uh, the funding to do this research. Yeah, and um, in a male-dominated <laughs> university, it is not easy. Like in this department, we are only two ladies, just two. So that says a lot. And uh, for you to be able to maneuver and to succeed in the midst of men, of course it's not easy. So you have to be better than them. Uh, you have to be better than them. And at the same time, you, you don't want to, 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 to ruffle any feathers. So it's, it's, it's a really maneuvering process. At family level, in an African setup, all the duties that are meant to be done in a woman, you still have to do them, regardless of whatever you're doing at the university. So there are those, there are those things that you have to do at home, and uh, especially when you already have the children, and the children, of course, there are meetings to attend in schools, there are all, all those things that you have to do, and it's still your responsibility. So it's not like uh, you're... you're, you're partner or your husband is going to understand that you're doing a PhD so they need to give you a leeway. You have to meet those obligations at the same time at the university level you still have to maneuver in a male dominated sphere. There are a lot of challenges for the ladies and then even if you get a chance to go out it would not be so easy if you have children especially young children. 
So, okay, from me, from my experience, I would think it's better for an, like an African scientist to pursue their education to PhD level before they go into the family business. Because that way, even if you have to go out for two, three years, you're okay. But if you start a family, then you're in trouble. <laughs> Do you see yourself making impact in the larger society in terms of making it a better place to live in? Uh, at least in my area of specialization, I know if I make it, and uh, the fact that I'm coming from a marginalized area, and the fact that I have managed to struggle to reach this level, I think that in itself is an incentive even for those at village level to know that if they pursue, if they have an objective and they pursue it, they are going to achieve it. And if I go out there to my community, even now when I go out there and I speak to these women, they really listen. Because they can actually see that you actually grew here and you were able to break away from the vicious cycle. You are actually able to, you are out there. Because for them, for my having reached this level, it's like a miracle. It's like a miracle to them. Because considering what I went through when I was young, nobody would have thought that I would have made it this far. So when I go out there and I talk to them, they, they really listen. So I know I have an impact. The duty that I have is to not just live in Nairobi and forget about those people, but to go back and give back to them.